It had ended up being a busy day in the kitchen, but with three of them, at least they did not need to run around like panicking deer in order to get it all done. Wipurna and Raoul had shown up a bit before dinner, as it was technically their job to cook said dinner today. To say they were pleasantly surprised would be an understatement. They had just planned on some simple stew and bread baked for breakfast, so with a little credit given, they were going to be very popular tonight. Wipurna, of course, had some questions about why her chickens had been so riled up when she had checked in them earlier. Luckily for Saf, she didn't find the scratch on her neck, so she got away with some mild chuckling, rather than getting laughed at like Tom. With the return of the hunting party came yet another influx of people to the kitchen, but with them the pies were already in the oven to bake, and they were out of there anyway. They had put in a few clay pots filled with the bones and trimmings, as well as water, which would boil down into broth. It might take a second firing of the oven to let them carry on overnight, but that wasn't too much of a problem. They wanted to keep warm anyway, might as well make broth with the same fire. Then tomorrow, Ray wanted to reduce it down to gelatin, so they could dry it into pocket soup for use as rations, both for winter and any trips they might have coming up. But as the puddings were also done, there wasn't that much more they needed to do and so Saf and Fengi had tried to covertly exit along with Ray, but the older woman would have none of it. Come on, we've done enough already, Saf pleaded in a harsh tone, as Jackie piled into the kitchen too along with Bo and Fo. Yeah, just let the others handle it, Fengi joined in, as she gave Jackie a chin-up nod which was reciprocated. But they went with Jarex. There must be so much to do... I will get a bucket of water. I'm sure he is very dirty. Saf and Fengi looked at each other to see if the other had a plan before they just sighed and looked back to Ray. Right then. Go make him sparkle then. Oh, right. I should bring polish. Saf did a quite gentle face palm as Ray merrily ran off towards yet more work, being replaced by Jackie who had the sort of overly kind smile on that you would expect when someone wants to ask a favour. So, we shot a couple deer and a few... No, nope, day off. See ya. Saf cut her off before hurrying out, Fengi turning to follow equally hurriedly. Enjoy the nice dinner. Jackie just looked after them, smile fading as her expression grew more tired. Geese... Ah, fuck. Once clear of the kitchen and anyone else who might be intending on putting them to work, the two women had looked to each other, Zaf getting to speak first. So, what now? We could go check on a drill, Fengi tried, sounding a touch conflicted. Zaf certainly didn't blame her if she didn't want to go see the dragon just yet, after their little chat the night before. Besides... Maiko was likely busy with her. I think maybe we should leave her be, Saf reluctantly answered. Or oh, you could come with me. I have something I believe I should discuss with young Fengi, came the gentle voice of a puma, much to Saf's and Fengi's surprise. They both turned to see the old man making his way slowly down the corridor. If you would not mind, of course... Saf looked to the younger huntress to answer. It was her that he was asking for, after all. Sure, um, what is it about? A drill, I am afraid, though I hope it will be more pleasant than her temper. Oh, Fengi replied, ears dropping a touch. Lincosta is waiting for us in the library, not to worry. Paulin is busy inquiring with Dakota and Our Lady. Oh, I hope it won't put her in a bad mood tonight. Anywho, come along now. And so they had followed the old man, making chit-chat as they made for the library where Lynn Costa had indeed been waiting. That is to say she was sitting at the large reading table, with an equally large tome in front of her. At the sound of the large double doors opening, she looked up from her studies, head turning to greet them with a large, almost ecstatic smile. Hi, Dad. I found another one I think we could manage. Telekinesis, just like Saf has. Huh? 
was all Saf got out. As Sapuma quickened his pace, walking over to his daughter and leaving the two huntresses to shut the door. Really? Do show me. Come along, you two. We have got something most exciting. Saf and Fengi once again exchanged glances, before following to see what the fuss was about. Lincaster moving over to make room for her father. The huntresses taking up station, behind the pair of them to get a look as well. What is it? Fengi questioned, craning her neck to have a look at the pages. To Saf, it was all strange symbols and diagrams. None she could read, but some she could recognize. That's a spell book, right? Yes, Linkosta replied enthusiastically. Saf wasn't quite sure why. They owned spell books already. They had done so since before Apuma even moved to the keep, long before her time. She was even quite certain that Linkosta even had a personal one, which she had made herself. What kind? Fengi questioned, curious as to why this was all so exciting. Is it a special one? It was a gift from our tolerated investigator Paulin. She was somewhat hesitant to hand it over, though she admits this was bought... Oh, how did she put it? A puma questioned, racking his brain for an answer. In case there were indeed people at this keep who could be trusted to wield it, Linkosta said with a giggle, running a finger down the page. I have read these kinds of books before. They had them at the academy. I never got to take any classes on them, though. They can be rather dangerous. Not to mention we didn't have any dragons back home then. Okay, will you just put me out of my misery and tell me what it is? Sapphire chuckled, as she tried to make sense of what she was looking at. It is a book on draconic sorcery. It's full of spells so powerful I could not cast them, not without dying anyway. Okay, a what now? Saf questioned again, as Fengi went a little quiet. Even so, they are quite dangerous to wield, and rarely done so by a single mage. Luckily, we have two, a puma added with a chuckle. Blessed be. Blessed be indeed, Dad. Think we can do this? I do not see why not. I have done so before, though that was quite some time ago, and I was the young one then, the old man responded, looking into the middle distance, reminiscing about the good old days. But I never thought the opportunity would arise again. Lucky thing she overheard you talking with Mother about if we could afford such a book, eh? Oh, most certainly. Though I have a feeling Jordan had a hand in it too, he replied, turning back to look at Saf and Fengi. Would you believe it? They came to our room and sat down with me in a nook to explain the dangers and problems of all of this. The look on her face when she learned I already knew. Most marvellous. I'm sure the nook would have been pleased with that one, Saf chuckled, looking to Fengi, who seemed rather worried. What do you mean, dangers? Well, you see, Fengi, what these spells do is they take the power required not from you, but from a dragon. Or other willing creature, really. If abused, it's some dark stuff, Linkoster added. But with consent, it can really make some things happen. I see. So how is that dangerous? Fengi tried again, as the two mages seemed to be dodging the question. Oh, well, it is a lot of energy. If anything goes wrong, it could be rather bad, a puma replied, a touch dismissively. No walking on the ritual lines, basically. It will also hurt whoever we are taking the magic from. Not as in it kills them, but you know, it burns a bit, Linkosta added, also not seeming too concerned about the downsides. Ah, Fengi replied, rather less enthusiastically, as she stared at the page. I suppose that doesn't matter when it's just a drill, then. Well, when you put it like that, Puma protested, Clearing his throat a little. I was rather hoping she wouldn't protest too much. It might even speed the work up a touch. Or we may save it for another battle. I haven't fought before, not really. But I know a few things, and there must be something in here that's useful in a fight. Linkosta added, starting to flip pages. I suppose if it's between a bit of pain or death, it sort of makes sense. Fengi relented, though it was clear she wasn't happy about it. 
I am guessing you will want to train beforehand, too. That would be for the best, yes. Though we have quite some studying to do first. We were just hoping you would broach the subject with her. Or perhaps Jarex, even. Opuma questioned in a hopeful tone. Those puddings are going to look like a peace offering now. You know that, right? Saf sighed. Or a bribe? Fengi added with a sigh. I'll ask her. Oh, thank you, Fengi. It will be worth it in the end, I promise. Linkosta said once more, looking up from her book. Some of the spells are incredible. The last one talked about lifting hundreds of kilos. Able to, my dear. There is a difference. Even a drill would only provide so much energy. And it is just the two of us, after all. Apuma corrected in a calming tone. It did at least make Linkosta look a touch abashed, but Saf doubted it actually did much to dampen her. Might as well throw Glira in there too. This all sounds right up her street, Saf added, not sure what to make of it all. As long as she thinks it'll please Tom at least. What the fuck is that? Tom questioned as he looked at the odd, jiggly mass sitting on his plate. They had been spoiled today, with both fresh meat, pies, and even some roasted potatoes courtesy of Raouf. By the sounds of it, they had Saf, Fengi, and Ray to thank for most of the meal, though. Notably the pies and whatever this was. Glancing down the table, he could see Saf and Fengi both looking around at people expectantly. Some had already dug in and seemed to fight enjoyable enough, and unfortunately for him, it would seem he caught Sapphire's attention, which soon had Fengi looking his way too. Um, what is this again? It's a pudding, with some dried berries in it and some of that sticky sweet stuff we got from the sugar. I see, Tom replied, looking back to the pudding. It had holes in it, almost like a cheese, but much smaller. It certainly didn't look like any pudding he had ever seen. It wasn't clear at all, but he could definitely see the berries in there, so that was something. Aside from the splotches of colour, it looked more milky to him, a touch yellow perhaps. Turning to Jackie beside him, he was surprised to find that she was already wolfing down the sweet dessert. This is tasty, thanks, she called down the table, mouth half full before going back for more, seeming quite sold. At least somewhat encouraged, Tom stuck his spoon in to cut a piece off. It wiggled back and forward on the plate a little, and he held it up for inspection. Oh well, here goes nothing. It had a weird chew, not that it was chewy. More like a fudge cake mixed with gel. It reminded him a bit of a lemon curd, but the holes were much bigger and the taste quite different indeed. There was some sweetness, but not much. The berries certainly dominated when you got one, but they weren't in every bit and they were a touch sour. The rest of it was just... milky. To him at least. Not that it was overly offensive, really. Looking back at the two chefs, he became acutely aware that they were still staring at him, both looking a touch worried by his reaction thus far. He nodded a little as he swallowed, trying to look pleased. Not bad. How'd you make the holes? Oh, that's suet. It melts away after it is set. I don't think I know what that is. Kidney fat, Fengi helpfully replied. From a deer, of course. Of course, Tom chuckled in reply, trying not to seem too worried. But it certainly sounds like a huntress dessert. Once dinner is done, we have three more for the dragons, Fengi declared, with quite some enthusiasm. You must have been busy, Tom replied with a smile. Not that he had any clue how much work this would have been. Around the table, there were a few odd looks, while to his right, Jackie finished chewing. Is Baron back or something? I didn't see him outside. No, Jackie, a drill is getting one too. Hopefully it'll warm her up a little. Fengi dismissed, enthusiasm seemingly a little dashed, as she went back to her plate and took another bite. I am more surprised you are giving Glira one. Are you getting anything in return? Bo questioned, ever practical. 
We thought maybe it would help with getting her to fly some logs over, but maybe not, I don't know. Fengi replied half-heartedly. Best of luck. I think you will need it. Even if this isn't half bad. I am sure she will be quite happy, Essie added in a warmer tone. A drill too, for that matter. She really did save your asses out there, didn't she? If you bring her sweets. Foe questioned with a chuckle, seeming to find it a little funny, which certainly didn't earn her a kind look from Essie. As a matter of fact, she did, Fengi retorted, with some finality in her voice. Maybe we should go see then, Sapphire questioned in a softer tone than she would normally use. Tom furrowed his brow a little. This must mean quite a bit to Fengi. Either that, or they didn't like the thought of a day's work being wasted. Before the surprise is ruined by gossiping and sharp ears. Oh, I haven't heard a thing. Jarex then called out merrily, the dragon's head peeking through the open door near the ceiling that allowed him to peek inside. And I won't say a thing if I get to try mine. Right on, you big blue bastard, I'll fetch it, Saf called out, getting up as she stuffed the last bit inside her mouth, chewing as she jogged off. Fingy took a moment before getting up, though once she did, it was with purpose. Right, I'm glad you all enjoyed it. See you all later, the young woman declared, setting off after Sapphire. There was some silence at the table following the unexpected display, though once the young huntress was out of sight, Essie released a pent-up breath. Oh, poor girl, do try to go easy on her. What was that about? Jackie questioned, with a touch of real worry, though it was a little dampened by her mouth still being full. She doesn't know what to do about that ghastly black dragon, but she is certainly trying some things. Is that good or bad? Tom found himself asking. I don't know. One could hope she would give up and just give a drill her damned orders and leave it at that. But she can't do that. It's Fengi. The older huntress conceded, looking rather solemn. I suppose, Jackie concurred with a shrug, giving Tom a slight bump to the side. At least you're not the only one who can't work out what to do half the time. No offence. Some taken, Tom half choked back. He could understand Fengi's problem, and it wasn't like he was any better. With some luck, she will break that black-souled wench and get her to understand that being an ass doesn't tend to get you very far, unless being left alone is what you want. Essie continued, with rather rare malice in her voice. Tom could only remember a select few times she would ever take to swearing. Even Bow and Foe paid heed, stopping their whispering amongst themselves as they stared. Perhaps disciplinary action is in order, Adita added, clearly trying to help. No, no. Leave it to Fengi. Even if it was to work, it would only make her doubt herself more. Ow, oh, I see. Adita replied, not looking like she quite understood it, but Tom was quite confident she would not take matters into her own hands. How do you even discipline a dragon? In the Inquisition, I mean, Jackie questioned. But if it was real or fake interest, Tom couldn't discern. I, well, mostly labour, I guess. Maybe a muzzle? Or lashings, of course. I don't think any of those would help here, Tom added, trying not to be rude. Quite. I do not believe for a second Fengi would allow it anyway. She much prefers to use the carrot as opposed to the stick. The smart choice, if you ask me, Essie agreed with a sagely nod. I sure don't mind. We got dessert out of it, Foe added with a chuckle, scooping up another bit and looking down the table towards Tom. If you don't want yours, I'll happily snatch it. Nope, I'm having this one. And so he did, even if it tasted a bit odd. At least Fengi wouldn't have to worry about if her cooking sucked. Jarex has snapped up his pudding in a few quick mouthfuls, and he made no effort to hide the fact it was quite enjoyable. He even gave Saf and Fengi a little bow. Zarko has stuck her head through the door from the Grand Hall to see what was going on, and was certainly less impressed with them. 
Don't you get used to that. I am not your personal chef. Well, maybe I shall have to hire one then, Jarex countered, not seeming willing to let his lieutenant dampen his spirits. Besides, I believe food preparation falls under the duties of the ground crew. You've tried Redex's cooking, Zarka replied with a huff, before retreating back to the dinner still unfolding on the other side. I wouldn't say it was that bad, Jarex protested, looking down to Saf and Fengi, still smiling. There were far more leftovers that day, even if it was quite salty. What did he manage to mess up? Saf questioned, suddenly curious. Oversalting was a rather easy thing to prevent, after all. Oh, just some plain stew. He forgot to wash the salt pork. Yeah, that would do it, Fengi concurred. As she hefted the second pudding the two of them had been carrying. Glad you liked it, but we have to get this one down to a drill. Your funeral, but if she doesn't want it, I sure do. The dragon responded with a chuckle, before letting out a deep breath and calling up on himself. He didn't have much to do for the evening, so he might as well sleep it away after all. Night, Jerix. Don't you sleep till noon tomorrow? Of course not. We're doing exercises all day, but it pays to be well rested. I'll give you a silver if you can keep Mother up. Hmm, I'll consider it, Saf chuckled in reply. Is she ticklish by chance? Dry the feet, but I warn you, she kicks. Oh, you, Sapphire. I like living, Fengi added in, already starting to move off. Maybe with a stick or something. Keep out of reach, you know. Seth tried as she went to follow, soon leaving the slumbering teenage dragon behind. We could also give her that pudding in an hour or two, maybe spike it with some more sugar. That sugar is worth more than what you are getting paid, you know that. Well, yes, but Glira can be such an ass. Ain't that the truth? Descending the stairs, the duo soon made it to the platform outside the armory and took to the skies. It was a brief hop, circling around the rocky outcropping on which the keep stood. A sliver of red still on the horizon, mourning the setting sun. The air was crisp and clear, but with a touch of wind buffeting the two of them about ever so gently. Saf let out a chuckle, looking at the black ground below, hidden even from what light the sunset provided. I think she's gotten lost again, she called out in a raised voice so that Fengi to her front could hear. Idril, where are you? Fengi shouted out into the darkness. An annoyed rumble coming up from below, followed by a hiss of displeasure. Why? What do you two want? We brought dessert, Fengi called out, which was met with a moment's silence as the two huntresses turned to follow the sound. Flying low and slow, a bright yellow eye soon shone in the night, looking up at them. The pitch black body melded well with the dark stone, until they were very close indeed. What do you mean? Madril questioned, her annoyance now blended with scepticism. The two made their landing well enough, the dragon's looming head soon making out the linen bag Sapphire was carrying. We mean we brought dessert, Fengi reiterated gesturing at Saf who held up the bag to show it properly. What's kind? The dragon asked with suspicion, though they clearly had her interest as she eyed the bag. Berry pudding, sweetened too. A thank you, you could say. A thank you, Idril responded, starting to stir. The dragon uncoiling before them and not taking her gaze off a sapphire. Is that so? It was a shit trip, and we all had a shit time, but you got us home. As well as some logs, which I'm sure will dry out one day. That's something, isn't it? Well, you are right about the shittiness of that trip, but I would rather be told we won't be doing that again. It was stupid. We won't be. Dakota and Anouk both agree. No more hauling until you can fly again. Cheer up. Not going to be much to do for a few days. Blessed be the idiots in charge, Edril grumbled, lowering her head before stopping to inspect them closer, looking at the pudding Saf was holding. When it wasn't offered, 
She sighed deeply and looked back to Fengi. You didn't finish, did you? Well, Linkosta and Apuma have a favor to ask of us, Fengi admitted reluctantly. Us, Adro snorted, not impressed by the sentiment. Am I to fetch some rare moss from deep in the swamp? Or perhaps kill some dangerous creature to sate their magics? Or do they want me to tell stories to be written down? No, no, it's not any of those, Fengi deflected, twirling her fingers as she rocked back and forth a little. At that response, Adril grew even more suspicious, lowering her head down to eye level and staring squarely at Fengi. What is it then? Spit it out. They were wondering if you would let them practice some spellcraft with you. Dragon spells. Ha! <laughs> and why would I agree to be bled and then tortured for their entertainment? Oh, it's not that bad. Lin said it would just sting a little. You know, some discomfort. Saf added in dismissively. Besides, Lin Costa doesn't have the stomach for hurting anyone. Nor does a puma, really. Yet she would have no problem tapping my blood and painting pretty pictures on me with it. I will be honest, she didn't tell me about that part. Does it have to be yours? Fengi questioned, likely hoping that maybe a deer would suffice. No, I will just rip a deer in half and use it like fucking charcoal to draw pretty pictures. Of course it has to be mine. Or dragon's blood at least. Think they want to tap Jarek's for it? She questioned sarcastically already knowing what the answer to that would be. Well, that settles that then, no, Fengi replied, the certainty from dinner once more back in her voice. Saf nearly dropped the pudding. A drill did little better in hiding her surprise. The dragon had looked ready to set off into another sarcastic litany. The grim smile immediately vanished, replaced with shock and then suspicion. What do you mean? The dragon demanded her singular eye glaring at Fengi as if trying to see what she was up to, head even moving around to check if she was hiding something behind her back. If you are speaking the truth, then I won't let them do it unless we truly need to. Or if you agree in the future, they can try to persuade Jarex or Glera for all I care. What if the Nook tries to force you? Adril tried, clearly aiming to poke holes in the young woman's resolve. Then she will have a good reason, I am sure. Alternatively, if you do not play nice, it may come up for discussion again. But for now, I will not allow it. And there is little they can do about that. Adril craned her neck even closer, body shifting to face them as she nearly touched Fengi's snout, singular large yellow eyes staring at her intently. But Fengi did not falter, returning the gaze. You want me to have something to lose then, eh? Okay, I can play that game. Do your bidding without complaint, or I get experimented on and tortured. If you want to look at it like that, so be it. Enjoy the pudding and the time off. I think you can sleep in tomorrow, unless you want to watch everyone training up in the skies. Sooner or later, we are going to have to see about that, too. If you live at this keep, you fight for it, too. Understood. Adril replied begrudgingly her gaze moving to Sapphire. Now, my dessert, as you put it, even if I was fed over four hours ago. Here you go, Saf went, unpacking the pudding as a drill opened up. For Jarex, the big thing did at least make for a few bites. For a drill, it was all gone in one big one. Bye-bye to all that work, I guess, Saf sighed to herself, as the white, yellowish wheel vanished from sight. Adril did at least chew it a little before swallowing, letting out a pleased rumble. Not something she did often. What did they give you for dinner? All the offcuts, of course. Though Maiko got me a boar leg, a day for treats it would seem. The dragon replied indignantly, looking at the both of them. Thank you, my gracious masters. Could I please have another sometime before winter? Cut the shit and you might. Seth replied as she turned to leave. Fengi remained for a moment longer, staring the dragon down. The dragon bowed, the stupid grin not vanishing from her face, 
Do tell Michael I would quite like another if he can manage. Come on, Fen. Let's go see if Gleera wants to hold logs. <laughs> <laughs>